have reached rest grace with rwgresearch.com. Open dash source dash energy. Video series RWG OSD Oversized Delta. Welcome back, boys and girls. But first, I gotta get this gal a drink. Here. There you go. Okay, watch out. Drilling holes. Yeah, welcome back. Okay, now we're all happy. So here we are. This is the 3D printed plastic piece that I created for the uh, pivot points that attach to these slide rails. Um, these are just test pieces. I will eventually make them out of aluminum is my goal. And then here are the skate plates as they could be called. And this is a M5 tap, an M5 bolt. Um, this is a type of socket head cap screw, pan head and basically we're just going to drill out these holes to the proper side and then thread them using the tap. In case you're wondering, when you do tapping for uh, this type of purpose, basically there's a tap and drill chart and you want to basically look at that chart, grab the correct drill bit according to what you're trying to tap. That's how you size these holes. That's what I've done here. I'm not going to go into detail on what these are because honestly this was weeks and weeks ago <laughs> so I don't remember. So what we're going to do next is basically countersink these holes, but really I'm just deburring. I'm not countersinking. So this is a special type of um, deburring slash countersinking bit that I, that I just showed you there. And actually, from my understanding, these are designed for aluminum. So if you just Google aluminum countersink or aluminum deburring tool for holes, you'll basically find this bit. I really like these but they're really designed for aluminum. If you use them on steel, they seem to go dull pretty quick. They do work on steel, but not really recommended from my understanding. So we'll get all the holes done just like that. So what I'm going to be showing you right here is basically I have a screw that has a, an, a taper on it, a countersink type of taper. And what I want to do is countersink this so that the screw is completely embedded beneath the surface of the aluminum. So I'm actually going to be taking one of those um, countersinks for aluminum and just really going at it, pushing pretty hard, really cutting that thing deep because what I want to do is hide that screw under there. And the reason I'm doing that is because it actually rubs against the railing if it's not below there. So there you go, flush. So you can see how nice those, uh, those tools work. They really do a good job. I recommend you get a set. I believe I picked these particular ones up at Harbor Freight. And they're about shot, but that's probably because I used them on things I shouldn't. So let's go ahead and get all the rest of these plates done exactly the same. Now it's time for a little tapping. So this is a standard tapping tool holder, and that's like a T-handle. And the tip of the um, tap fits inside there, and then it's sort of a compression nut. So you just tighten that thing down, and it's tight in there. These are actually my grandpa's. They're very old. They're a little rusty, a little stiff. Uh, but work really well, so thanks, Grandpa. He actually passed away, I think, before I was born or a couple years after, so I never met him, but love your tools. Ah, uh, pause the recording. Did you guys hear the bells start? Should have counted them for you. Ten bells, 10 p.m. Anyway, so I am going to be tapping by hand. I don't really like using the drill to tap, especially when I'm working with aluminum. Now, highly recommended to put a tiny little bit of oil on here. They make what they call tap magic for aluminum. Works amazing. However, this aluminum seems to cut pretty nicely. Uh, so I wasn't too concerned. So I just went at it by hand and seemed to work fine. If it was starting to gum up, I'd definitely grab some oil here. Potentially even just some water would have been enough to get the job done. But particular type of oil for the job, pretty important. Oil is not really the, the right thing for this. You actually use tapping fluid. So if you want to do this on your own, you're having problems, try a little oil of the proper type. So that's about it. So what I'm going to be showing you right here is, do you see those shavings on the end of the tap? You really, really want to remove those before you ream this thing backwards because you'll pull that stuff in and basically ruin the threads potentially. So some people will run the tap halfway and what they call breaking the threads. So they'll stop, run it backwards a little bit, and then keep going forward. 
but this plate's pretty thin so wasn't worried about that a uh, little bit of cleanup there deburring tool again just nip the edges and that's the plate looks really good turned out nice I was happy with it on to the next step my friends well this steps pretty boring I'm just cleaning up these plastic parts using a knife uh, the deburring tool for this is fine too but I just grabbed a knife and cleaned out every little spot and trimmed the edges and opened the holes up because what I like when I like when I print stuff I really like it to be smashed against the glass so I'm, I know for a fact it sticks well and uh, in this case it mushes out the bottom and mushrooms everything and you gotta clean that up pretty good so I've seen to have better luck this way sometimes using a raft is a better option but it doesn't always come off nicely so I used rafts for a while and then I quit went back to the old ways <laughs> I guess they both got their pros and cons either waste plastic and can't get it off or have a lot of initial cleanup to do on the bottom one of the problems with 3D printing is the holes aren't always perfectly round and so even though you print it out and it works well it doesn't quite fit so what I found out is if you grab a set of allen wrenches and just keep using the allen wrenches as a reamer it's just enough to sort of ream it out you can work your way up to whatever size you want and it doesn't really damage anything it's not too much stress it's not real sharp so you have to really work at it but this is a little tip that I've been using all the time it seems to work really well and my wife's got the sniffles what did you say I said I can't breathe out of my nose so you're sniffling yes while I'm doing audio recording I can't breathe sounds like an issue for everyone else <laughs> here is that really small uh, these are three millimeter nuts 3m nuts and bolts as well Basically, you can see I ground off one side. I just did that with the Dremel. And that was because how I printed this, everything is such tight spacing that I had to grind it off or else it would hit the plate, which was definitely a problem. So there you can see the little hole. Pop that guy in there, and now it's flush with the bottom. Works pretty good. A little extra effort, but we got it done. And then we did them all. Got it done. Not a big deal. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Oh, that's not what I was going to say. Next up, putting the plastic pieces, attaching those to the uh, skate plate. So I'm using my little technique for reaming out using the Allen wrenches and then uh, affixing everything I need. So earlier, uh, there was a small little screw, and then the other ones are these M5 bolts right here. And there they are. I did add a washer, one extra washer in there just to bring the edge of the bolt or the back side of the bolt out far enough otherwise it would hit the uh, the rail. Alright, you see that screw sticking out right there? That poses a, an issue. So basically I'm just going to cut it off. This looks like a brass screw. It is not a brass screw. It's actually a steel screw that's covered in brass to keep it from rusting. Uh, I'm using most of the nuts and bolts and hardware that I've got laying around so you know it is what it is I use what I got I didn't buy anything special or custom so snip it off put it back in and it turned out pretty good that worked out just peachy but I did run it in first and then ran it back out then cut it then put it back in and that sort of gives you those threads because that's I didn't thread the plastic for this type of screw, I just run it in there if it's the right size, which this is. Well, we do them all one at a time. One at a time, but fast. <laughs> we do it fast, but one at a time. Like coloring. Coloring, this is right. Just like coloring. Alright, now we move on to putting the wheels on. I did not show too much detail on this, and I don't know why, but basically I'll have to show more detail later because I ended up putting a different type of screw on here. These are 3M uh, screws or bolts, whatever you want to call them, socket head cap screws I guess is what they are. And I had to put a couple of nuts on there and make them too long because they wouldn't fit, they went too far. Uh, all of these fun things. So actually, I keep all of the screws, tons and tons of screws, just everything I take apart I keep the screws and it just so happens that I dug through those screws and found the original 
hardware that these used to have on them and that basically created a flush mount so that worked out pretty well well that took long enough luckily for you you didn't have to sit through it <laughs> uh, anyway um, so basically this is what the plates look like with the rollers attached to them so two of them are fixed the other one is movable so the two that are fixed give me my exact uh, dimensions away from the edge of the rail basically and then the one that moves is in that empty hole you see there basically it just slides left and right and you push it over clamp it down and that's how you sort of set your tension now a better method would be to use some sort of a offset um, I forgot what they actually call that sort of like a cam where you turn it a little and it puts pressure on there that would be sort of a better option but I did not engineer that into this design uh, if, if I absolutely need to because I can't get the right pressure on there then that's what I'll do but you know seems to be that this will work out just fine so we'll give it a go see what happens and then we just finish them all like that get them done alright so we're gonna go ahead and install the belts here so what I've done is I've des designed a little place where a nut fits in a hole there and I had to actually dremel off the nut to make it fit flush and then the top part the little bitty piece of plastic is what has the slots in it and that's what actually grips the belt and then just tighten these guys down on here and you're good to go uh, works really well it's similar to what I've done on my other printer and I've never had an issue with it here is that really small piece I was telling you about you can see those little bitty tiny little grooves in there that is what actually catches the belt so on the other version on my other 3D printer those pieces are actually on the slide portion and the clamp just holds it against it this one's sort of in reverse and uh, as long as it's tight it shouldn't pose, it, pose an issue but we'll see next up the belts so I went ahead and attached the belts before I put them on there because it just seems like a logical thing to do before I put them on the slide rails so that's all I did I attached them that's it. What do you think about that? I think it's time for bed. Yeah. What is it? It's 10.30. Oh, boy. I gave you a half hour. A half an hour. See, I'm in trouble. I better get going. I'm almost done. Check it out. There you go. Here's some close-ups. Now, you can see where the belt numbers are. Each one of them are in the exact same spot. That is due to the anal must be precise and exactly the way it needs to be everything needs to be the same blah 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 that's just the nature I have my dad to think for that I think he's part of that <laughs> everything is not right if it isn't right it must be done again anyway you can see I've got a little bit too much pressure on there and that little plastic seems kinda weak so I could potentially put a little metal plate on the back side and probably be a little bit better but We'll see. If I ever break one, then, then we'll figure it out from there. Not too concerned yet. Alright, I did all this on my counter in the kitchen. Don't necessarily need a workshop to do good work. You just need the right tools and the know-how. Alright, God bless. Have a good day. Next up, probably working on the motor mounts. Laters. Got anything to say? I'm just really tired. <laughs> and good night.